Okay guys, I'm gonna do something really fast. Uh, I'm at Latour's Auto and I have yet another EVAP leak with a P449 code, P0449. And uh, what I wanna do is show you how quick we can identify an open solenoid and then check the driver and control circuitry in the computer. All right, you can see I'm all set up here. Underneath I have a car lifted up on the one side and I have the charcoal canister drop down so I can get to my vent solenoid and I am back probing the control wire right now. Uh, negative lead to the frame, confirmed the ground already. And we're reading 0.64. Now I'll take the scan tool and command it. I'll get you a shot of the fault code first. Hang on, just so we're all believing me in what I'm telling you. I'm not using my tripod, sorry. Maybe a little camera movement on this one. I just wanna get this done fast. All right, so this is an open control it says uh, EVAP vent solenoid control circuit. Okay, it's a control circuit fault. And generally, when we have those, it's suggesting a wiring problem or solenoid problem. So we go to our output controls, functional tests, output, and then we go to our EVAP purge, sorry, EVAP vent solenoid closed open test. We're going to focus up here the open and close. Okay, open is it normal? Position and then close. Hit this one to close it. All right. Focus on this. Watch it. There's closed. There's open. So to 0.64, it should be going to 12 volts. It's a ground side switched component with it off, which it's off right now. We should be reading 12 volts. I turn it on. That's what we want to see near zero. What we want to make sure of before we condemn the solenoid as being faulty is let's make sure that we don't have a voltage drop on the feed side so all we're gonna do just gonna move my t-pin over to my red and white wire that's my feed side I've had the key on for a little while so my battery's weak it's 11.7 is good for the feed but that's not a good test what we want to do we want to turn this on at the same time we're watching that so closed is on electrically on this and notice we're at 1173 so we're maintaining our voltage let me turn it off it's off stayed exactly the same so our feed circuit is fine our low voltage on the control can only be um, a short to ground on the control circuit where it's bleeding it would be a partial short almost full short to ground in our case because we're reading 0.64 let's go back to that one more time so low voltage on control this would be chapter three material in my book uh, where i talk about ground side switch solenoid circuitry and troubleshooting a condition like this where I have control voltage fixed at zero or fixed low is the terminology I used in my text uh, that's what I'm following right now is really a method here and identifying why is this voltage low we know the feeds good coming in I just did a loaded circuit test and granted it's looking like a solenoid that's open. We're not really loading it, but our problem is definitely not on the feed side. That's what that test showed me, regardless that this test isn't being fully loaded like a good solenoid would give it. So again, good feed control is either short to ground on the control wire, a shorted computer driver, which you see the changes of 0.6 to zero. Let me show you again. I turn it on which is closed on the scan tool and there's your zero. So that in itself is telling us driver activity. It's not gonna be a bad driver. We'll check it anyway. But really what you're following here, simple procedures. One last check, let's make sure this control circuit's not shorted to ground. I don't think that it is, but um, this will be the confirmation. And then also this is gonna check the driver function and control circuit for us. It's gonna be the test light. Yeah, I can't really do this. Um, I have this control circuit still back probed. My feed side is this side. So I'm just using 
uh, the test light in uh, in series to the circuit. I don't want to put the pin on the front side, spread the terminal B1 and 2. I could chance it touching my test light. If that T-pin would touch my test light and I turn this driver on, I'm going to fry the computer. Guys, you need to pay attention when you're doing this kind of testing. Um, I want to use the feed circuit as my load and I'm going to turn the driver on for my ground and my test light should light. Okay, go ahead and hit closed. All right, sweet. Test light is lighting. Go ahead and hit open. Do it one more time. Close? Yep. Nice. Open? Yep. Okay, cool. We are done, guys. It is that simple. It is an open in this solenoid. The reason why it's reading 0.6. Let me wait till that phone stops. Yeah, we're we're All right, so again, we're done. Yeah. Completed circuit. The reason that the reason this wire was reading 0.6 plugged in is this solenoid is not totally open. We have a little bit of a bleed coming through, and to be honest with you, that kind of contradicts some voltage drop theory, but what's happening here, this 0.64 that we're reading is actually my meter is dropping this down. So if I could somehow connect to that wire that I'm connected to without a meter and view into that, I would read 12 volts. Remember, no current flow, no voltage drop. So why is the solenoid reading 0.6? because it's not completely open. There is some continuity through there, very, very, very high resistance, but my meter is actually dropping that 12 volt that would be coming out on the control wire, circuit off voltage, 12 volts, normal. We're reading 0.6, there's a bleed through, and my meter is actually the ground for that circuit. <laughs> So, hope you followed that. Great, great lesson on why we need a test light. I just had this big argument with some people on Facebook the other day about when to use a test light, and, and man, people went off, and I'll tell you what, this is when you use it. Manufacturer flowchart even recommended it. Uh, last thing in some of those guys' defense, if you're not careful in what you're doing with test lights, you can hurt things on modern vehicles. So don't be plugging your test light in just wherever you want to. Outputs, guys. That is an output solenoid. That's a high load device, okay? Solenoids, relays, injectors, electric motors, light bulb circuits. That's where this guy comes in. You start getting into module to module communication, things like that, you better be careful, especially on today's cars. All right, hope you guys like that. That's it, we're done. Needs a vent solenoid.